What's up, everybody? It's Ness. I'm uh, just getting off work and driving to the house right now. But, you know, recently, since um, since December, God has really been putting something in my heart and in my wife's heart. And he's been showing and he's been revealing things to both of us at the same time. And what that is, is that the church here in America is not moving with the power and authority that the scriptures talks about. The, the churches here in America and in Europe are moving in a very dry, religious, legalistic, boring, unexciting, and unspiritual way. But when you look at the church overseas, Africa, China, Philippines, um, where there is persecution, where the saints don't live in abundance and they don't consume so much they have salaries. Even the poor in the United States are fed seven days a week. And when it gets too cold, they have shelter. They have systems in place by the government that they lean on instead of leaning on the Lord. That's here. This is the church in America. No matter what, financially, um, Whatever hardship you're going through There's a means to provide outside of Christ The church here in America reminds me Of When Jesus cast out A, a legion of demons From the man that was at the cemetery And those of you that are familiar with that story Says that the, they cannot bind him With chains, shackles he was naked, violent, and no one can tame this man. What amazes me is that when Jesus cast out demons that was in this man's body into swine, and the scripture says that the man was dressed and in his right mind. The reaction from the religious folks was they got scared and they told Jesus, you got to leave. That's the American church. That's the European church. It's all about a salvation prayer. And let me get be part of a little group, a little social club. But when it comes to being real... Right, Not a prosperity gospel, but when it comes about hardship, when it's talking about spiritual warfare, when it talks about talking about the devil and demons and the fallen state of the world and how you fight and how you persevere, because it says in Ephesians that we have arrows from the enemy every single day. So therefore, be ready, put on the armor of God, which is the Holy Spirit. To surrender to the Lord Resist the devil And he will flee When it talks about demonic oppression When it talks about How we are to walk as believers According to Christ That we would do greater things Like healing the sick Casting out demons Trampling over snakes The church don't move that way as a matter of fact, the church says that's demonic. Speaking in tongues, that's demonic. Casting out demons from people, especially those that call themselves Christians. Oh no, Christians can't have a demon. I'm not saying Christians can be possessed by a demon, but you sure are under attack. You sure are oppressed. You sure can possess one. And yes, I believe in generational curses. Familiar spirits Demons that know you very well And have been around 
in your family tree. Because guess what? When a family member dies, that person passes away, but that demon don't die. It get passed along. That's why you see so much in the scriptures about, you know, uh, well, this person is suffering. Um, did he sin or his father sin or whatever it is? And many times, of course, you know, that wasn't the case. But there's something to it. We're called to fight. We're called to walk in power. I've said this before, but let me tell you right now. Um, the devil is a created being. And therefore, he's not God. So everything, everything that he does, he has to counterfeit. Everything that he does, he has to pervert. He perverts the things of God. Because he's not God, he cannot create new concepts. He cannot have new ideas. He takes what God already has and perverts it. So does he have his own version of speaking in tongues? Which makes the church scared and say, oh no, that's of the devil, so we don't speak in tongues? Absolutely, so that you have that response. And it's called the kundalini spirit A false spirit, an unholy spirit Does the devil mimic and fake the casting out of demons in churches Which we would call deliverance? Absolutely And what, what's the response? The church says, that's demonic Why? So that you walk in bondage in strongholds Because you say, you know what, I want nothing to do with it Just like the religious people that said and told Jesus, you got to go because instead of celebrating that that man had a legion of demons in him, they got freaked out by something spiritual that happened that they can't even fathom. And they, they, they say, you know what, Jesus, you got to go. That's how the American church reacts to the spiritual. And the devil wins. That's why you have cardinal Christians showing up on Sunday with dry bones, oppressed, suicidal thoughts, stuck in a rut, don't read their word, don't feed themselves. And then to the outsider, that's the God that, that I want, that you're telling me I should have when you look defeated. There's more to it than that, y'all. We are to spread the gospel through the Great Commission. We are to cast out demons. We are to heal through the power of the Holy Spirit if it's in His will. We are to believe that and move in that. Because the church of Satan and the occult, they move in it. And, they, and, and we know it's real. We know they astral project. We know they cast spells. We know that people get possessed. We know that they try to claim territory. And it's all, it's all real. <coughs> but where do they get it from? They get it from our God. They get it from our scriptures. They get it because that's the way we're supposed to move. But they move that way and the church is dead. We live in a... a, a the era of the last church, the Laodicean church. The church that thinks that is rich, but we're broke. We're wretched. We have nothing. Why? Because we do not understand the Holy Spirit, which Jesus said, I must, I must leave and leave you another, which will always be with you so that we move in power. What power? What power is that? A supernatural power through the Holy Spirit. Do you know why so many people, especially the youth, the younger generation, they, they're so attracted to the occult and new age and stones and wicca and all this stuff? Because they're attracted to the supernatural. And they see the church operating 
in an unsupernatural way. When we have power, instead they just see legalism, they see laws, they see dryness, they see defeat. And they're being enticed by a demonic power that's copying the way that the believer should move. If the United States church, the American church would wake up and we would move in power. Just like Jesus said, casting out demons, healing, and, and, and really showing the power of the Holy Spirit, man, that would be game changer. It would be game, a game changer, because that's evidence. That is evidence of the power of God and how we, how we would move. It would be undeniable. We need to wake up, man. We need to wake up. So the message for 2024 for the church is, I truly, truly believe that this is a year of restoration for our families as believers. I'm talking about the saints. Restoration in our families and unity within the church. Sunday has always been known as the most divided day for the Christian church because of all these denominations. You know what? We need unity within the Christian faith. As long as Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and there's no other way to obtain salvation but through the blood of Christ and he is Savior and he is God in the flesh who died and was physically resurrected the fundamentals that cannot be changed or corrupted everything outside of that is not is not a salvation issue and the church needs to get together, be united, because the Lord is coming back, not for a divided church, but a united church. And don't get my words twisted. I'm not talking about a universalism type of unity. I'm not talking about a one world religion type of, oh, we just accept anything for the sake of unity. No, you keep salvation what it is. We don't, we don't waver in that. But if you don't believe in tongues, we shouldn't be divided about that. If you don't believe in the rapture at all, or you do, you just don't know where it falls, pre, mid, or post, you shouldn't be divided about that. If you don't believe in deliverance, you shouldn't be divided about that. But the church needs to be united because we, we already have enough enemies. Like it says in 1 John, the world hates you. But we already do a good job hating one another. This is a year of restoration in families and unity in the church. But it's also a year of deception, delusion, and a lot of demonic activity for the unbeliever, for the world. It's going to get dark. But when you see these things look up, because the Lord is coming. That day is drawing near. Drop me a comment. Tell me what you think. Say what's up. We need unity this year for 2024. God bless in Jesus' name. Peace out.